Hi, I'm Sam Ekoff here from Acoustic and Digital Piano Buyer Magazine, and I'm here today to show you the new Vivo series of digital pianos from Italian manufacturer Dexabel. The Vivo series is their home line, packaging some of the technology that we've already seen in some of their Vivo series instruments, stage pianos, combo organs, other things like that. So I'm going to walk you through it today. There's a lot to show, so I want to dive right in. First of all, the Vivo series is packaged with a nice stand. It has a nice Euro design to it and features this slow close key cover. It's kind of nice in the fact that you can't accidentally slam it. It's MDF and then it has this nice curved metal edge. Um, I discovered that books stand up very, very nicely on it. Sheet music doesn't fare quite as well because of the curved edge, but putting a book behind it solve that problem really, really easily. As we see on a lot of digital pianos, we have our control section off to the left, featuring an OLED display and a number of buttons, an integrated music stand, a couple of speakers here, and our power and volume control off to the right. Speaking of volume, the Vivo series pl puts out plenty of power. Um, I find that most of the time I don't even have the volume level halfway up, and it's as loud as I would possibly want it for home and practice use. The H1 series features two speakers. Step up to the H3 series and you get a pair of drivers in addition to those speakers. And when you step up to the H7 series, you also add a subwoofer and a beefier amplifier for even more volume. All of the H series of Vivo pianos feature two independent headphone jacks on the front, just under the front right-hand corner. They also feature an audio input jack, so you can connect something like your phone or other music device. And they feature a pair of USB jacks, one of which you can use to connect a flash drive with additional sounds, and another one of which serves as a USB connector for things like iPads and computers. We'll talk more about that later. They also feature a pair of quarter-inch audio jacks, which are outputs, on the back underside of the instrument. And the underside might be a sort of unusual choice for a location for jacks. However, understand that it allows you to completely back the instrument up against a wall and save space in your home. All the sound you're hearing on today's video review are actually taken directly from the audio jacks in the back so that you're not relying on the camera microphone, which we all know can be of rather dubious quality to hear the sounds. And speaking of the sounds, the sounds that Dexabel has included here are really, really outstanding. Um, there's a really nice selection of piano sounds and a good selection of other instrument sounds too. Before I go ahead and show you some of the sounds, I want to talk a little bit about the technology that Dexabel has packaged into these pianos to make them sound so great. This, these pianos use a combination of two different sound generation methods. The first method is sampling, and this is a very common method that we see in lots of digital pianos. Essentially what happens is they go and find some really excellent, beautiful instruments and record every single note of that instrument. When you play your keys on your Dexabel Vivo series piano, it actually plays back the recording. And there are lots of different drawbacks and advantages to this system. The big advantage is that it's a lifelike sound. It's not trying to be synthesized. You're actually getting the sound of that awesome piano. But what sometimes manufacturers do is they cut corners on the way they create these samples because more samples takes up more memory. Having to include more memory in an instrument increases the cost of that instrument. So some tricks that manufacturers sometimes use is to, instead of allow the sample, the recording, to fade out on its own, they will get through the first little bit of the recording and then they'll cause it to loop and then artificially cause the volume to decay. And there's a problem with this. The problem is that the harmonics on a piano note, when you play them, aren't frozen in time. They change. And so causing one section to loop, even a very small section, will, uh, will cause those harmonics to appear to be frozen. And the sound becomes very dead and it's not lifelike anymore. Dexabel have really worked hard to solve that problem by using very, very long samples compared to what some of their competitors have done. The samples on the lowest notes where that harmonic shift becomes most apparent are up to 15 seconds long. So if I were to play some low notes here, you will hear As the sound decays, 
the harmonics continue to shift in time, just like they would on a real piano. And that really does a lot to add realism to the sound. When you think about it, it's rare that you end up holding a single note for 15 seconds, and so most of the time you won't even encounter that loop point in the sample, and so you get that full, wonderful acoustic sound. Um, another way <clears throat> that manufacturers sometimes cheat and try to save and conserve sample memory is by recording only one piano and then digitally manipulating that piano sound. But Dexable have not done this. What they did is they went out and recorded multiple different pianos so that when you go to play their grand piano sound, you have the sound of an acoustic piano. When you get their romantic piano, you're hearing the sound of a playel piano. When it's the tack piano, you are hearing the sound of a real piano with a real mandolin rail in it or tacks pushed into the, the hammers to get that official sound. So they're, they're not trying to digitally manipulate things to save on sample RAM that way. And again, it's one more thing that just really helps to provide a high quality sound. The other area where Dexabil has raised the bar is the quality of the recordings they've made. Typically in digital pianos, you see sounds that are recorded at 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, which is the specification of audio. It's how many times per second audio is sampled, 44,100 times, and the resolution of those samples. And 16-bit 44.1 is the sample resolution that we find on commercially released CDs. So it's good quality. But Dexable have gone one level farther with this, and they have recorded at 48 kilohertz and 24-bit. So that's the same level of quality that we see in DVD audio. So it's significantly better. Whether or not you're going to be able to hear that difference in a home environment, I'm not sure. It all depends on your ear. But I really like the fact that Dexable has really gone to lengths to achieve the highest possible level of quality. Now, as we said a moment ago, using sampling technology is great for realism, but it can also have some drawbacks. If you stop and think about it, one of the things that gives an acoustic piano its distinctive sound is when I'm holding down one key, or two keys, and then I go to play a lower note, I'm going to get some sympathetic vibrations of the strings from the first two keys I'm holding down introduced by playing the lower notes. And if we're trying to sim simulate this with sampling, it becomes a very, very challenging thing to do because each one of the keys on the piano could have multiple frequencies that are introduced in, in terms of sympathetic vibration. And they could happen at multiple volume levels, and they could happen from multiple different keys. And then trying to come up with some software which would not only make recordings of all this, but then also to switch to all those recordings in real time is a daunting task. So Dexable have solved this problem in a different way. And that's through using a synthesis technique called physical modeling. Physical modeling makes a mathematical model of something like a vibrating string or a drum head, of course, in this case, a vibrating string. And then it will add that to the sampled sounds, which are already here. So when I hold down these two C's, and I strike them so gently that they don't play, and then I play a lower C, if you listen very carefully, you can hear that the two C's that I was holding silently are ringing sympathetically, just as they would on an acoustic piano. Pretty cool stuff. I haven't ever seen a digital piano that does that before. So, this is a really important thing when we're playing because those sympathetic vibrations really kind of change the way the piano and the instrument sounds as we play. Dexable have also gone to lengths to recreate different mechanical noises that acoustic pianos produce, including the damper pedal sound, the sound of the damper swishing in and out of the strings, key noises, and things like that. We'll get all into that a little bit later because all of that is customizable. It's really, really cool. So, in the next clip, I'm going to take a little time to walk you through some of the great sounds in this instrument.